All right, today I'm going to show you how to split firewood in a 4x4. Oh, not this kind of 4x4, one like this over here. For many, many years, I would split firewood with just the regular standard thing of, you know, you get a piece of firewood and you have, you know, you get an old stump or something, you put one piece of firewood on, you split it, it falls over, you lean over, pick up the firewood, put it up, and it just it gets tiresome, always leaning down, picking it up, you know, resetting it up and putting it down. And then I saw a guy on, on YouTube the one time and he had a bunch of firewood and he had rope and bungee cords around that, all these pieces of firewood sticking up and he's just going around, just boom, boom, just splitting them like that. And I thought, hey, that's pretty neat. Um, problem with that is sometimes if you get a little bit sloppy, you end up hitting the rope with your maul and you know, cutting the rope or you hit the bungee cord and ping, it goes, you know, whatever. Not only that, but as the firewood starts to split, it kind of goes off to the side and it pushes the string down and you end up, the, you know, the, the wood starts to fall over. So, had this idea here the other day of actually building one out of old two by sixes, much like a raised bed garden, really. It's just two by sixes that are screwed together with other scrap two by sixes. And what you want to do with this when you're splitting to avoid an overstrike, which is, of course, when you hit in here with wood and you basically break your handle, when you're splitting, don't come down like this here at this edge, okay? Make sure that you're splitting out here like this, like that, and then move around and be always splitting in here. So try not to split in here. You know, probably will, but you know. So let me show you how it works. Come on, get down in there. Some of these little pieces are a bit of a pain. It's really nice, it keeps, keeps everything right where it should be. Try to get these little ones done first. Definitely uh, a lot quicker than a hydraulic splitter. A whole lot cheaper too. That needs to be split again. Some of these bigger ones. That's a good one. violate my rule there. <laughs> Try not to split too close to things so you avoid an overstrike. Well, you'll have these things. It's not rocket science, you know. <sighs> what we have here is mostly birch too. I should say that. Just white birch, real good firewood. Didn't have as much of this where I grew up in Pennsylvania. Mostly oak down there was the big one. Oh, 
man. It's a good workout, too. I remember, kind of brings to mind a story about my grandfather on my mother's side. And uh, I was black back splitting wood the one time. He died back in uh, 2009, I think. But is a hard worker all his life. And uh, I was back splitting firewood the one time. I was a young man. And he came walking back. And he was watching me for a while. And he said to me, well, he said, I think I better go sit down. He said, watching you work's really making me tired. So, <laughs> it's funny. But I remember he would, he'd get a splitting mole or a sledgehammer and he did not miss. If he was hitting a steel wedge in, every single hit, bing, bing, just perfect. He knew how to work. Come on here. Something new for us this year is right back there behind me, you can see it. A Holzhausen or Halfen, depending where your what your dialect is in, in German. Basically wood house. If you're from Germany, you might recognize that or you might recognize it just from watching videos on YouTube. So most of the small ones are split. Small ones are kind of a pain. If you don't hit them exactly perfect in the center, you end up just, you know, splintering pieces off to the side. But I got that one like that right there. You can kind of see that. Just went off to the side a little bit. Just trying to open up the, you know, open the bark on some of these small ones. It dries a lot better that way. Uh. And the neat thing about this system too is, this is half of a face cord. A full face cord is four feet by eight feet, and then whatever the width of the firewood is. These are cut to 14 inch pieces because of, uh, we have an old wood cook stove. It can't take 16 inch pieces. But, you know, traditionally it'd be 16 inches about the most common. Unless you have a, an old wood stove that can hold, hold, you know, 24 inch pieces of firewood. Like an old, uh, they used to call them all nighter wood stoves. That's what they were actually called. And uh, those things, from what I've heard, were pretty amazing. We had a similar type of stove, but it was smaller growing up and we heated a pretty decent sized house completely with firewood. So I learned how to do firewood from a young age. Good skill to learn. smaller ones yeah good <sighs> gotta stand back and just kind of look I think I got most of them there's a big one got that in here Uh, this is kind of a little bit short-handled of a mall for this. Probably helped to have a little bit longer handle, but I have long arms, so it kind of makes up for it. Uh, 
All right, finish up here. Of course, there's a lot of rumors going around the internet that uh, Brian Denlinger's a lazy man, doesn't know how to work for a living. And uh, whether you believe that or not, it's really up to you. But I'd like to just say that anybody who puts those rumors out, I'd like to see them put their video out of them splitting firewood or any other manual labor. Then we'll see who's lazy. Of course, you know, if it comes out on YouTube, in a video, you can certainly believe it because nobody lies on YouTube. No, never. Especially if they have a church building. Then you can trust them for sure. Because people that go to church are always upstanding citizens. They never lie. They never steal, never cheat. Yeah, and if you believe that, I believe there's somebody that lives in Brooklyn that'd like to sell you a bridge. Oh, now we got a tough one. But I've done firewood for a long time, and uh, this is very strenuous, but two of these, and you have a face cord. Six of these, you have a full cord. So it's a really good way to measure it out, because you, you know, with a holes house in there, kind of, how do you measure four by four by eight? Kind of weird. But with this, if you're splitting here and stacking there, you can get a better measurement. Almost done. Another one of the fun things that I la laugh about is uh, people online, this little wicked new IFB system, Paul Sodenberger, I mean Wittenberger, comes out and he says, uh, Denninger is self-employed but unemployed. How does that work? I have no idea. Never understood that. I only received unemployment benefits once in my life. That was back many years ago when I worked building boats. Got laid off for a little bit after my appendix burst from working at the boat place because it was toxic. And uh, so they laid me off temporarily for a few months and I got unemployment. That's the only time I ever received unemployment. That was back before I was saved. So, a lot of lies out there. One more piece to do. There we go. I think I got them all. Now you gotta walk around and check. There's one I kind of missed. Oh, there's one I missed. Got him. Another one. But, pretty good way to split wood. If I can get one out. There you go. That one doesn't want to come out too easily. Nice firewood. So, if you split firewood by hand, I recommend this. This seems to be the best method I've tried. I know some guys will take a old tire and put it on a stump, but you know, you're still dealing with only one or two pieces. Whatever, you know, 
might be good to kind of split it up a little bit. Get it? That's a joke. Uh, you know, um, you know, I don't know. But for me, this works really good. So I hope you enjoyed just kind of a little departure from the normal Bible teaching type of stuff. And uh, so that's going to be it. Try it out. Except for my enemies out there, because I know you can't try it out. You don't have the ability to do this.